Uh, I commented a while ago about making a remote on off and you said a, a, a 100 to 200 amp MOSFET would be too big and expensive, but look at the iFlight anti-spark filter. Is the iFlight anti-spark filter a, a MOSFET? What does it do? That, that's the answer to your question. What does it do? What is it and what does it do? I suspect it cuts off. I mean, it the, the MOSFET is rated that high, but I suspect it cuts off before it pulls all the amperage. Maybe it actively sits with that amperage the entire time. But to me, it looks like it flips off once it initializes. Because that, that, that MOSFET there, um, I've already looked up, is a 300 amp 80 volt MOSFET. Is it is it rated to switch 300 amps? That's what it says. So could we then theoretically switch all of battery voltage? Switch I'm not an electrician. No yeah. idea. I you looked up you looked I mean, up the data sheet then. Yep. I oh. suspect it's like actually not loading, but I don't know. I mean it says it's rated for it, so that's interesting. I mean, if it is in fact a three hundred amp I mean, I'm skeptical that this PCB would take 300 amps for very long, but I mean, okay. 300 amp, 80 volts. Well, I'll tell you what let's do. No, they're not going to answer. iFlight's not going to answer that question. They're not going to, they're not going to answer that question. Um... If the if that this MOSFET is truly capable of carrying 300 amps and switching it, then perhaps it could be used as a remote on-off switch. Um, I'm surprised to find out that something that small can do that, but uh, it, that perhaps that's the thing that we've been looking for. If that's true, then that's the new correct answer. But I'd like someone to demonstrate that for me before I uh, commit to that answer because that would surprise me. The battery must go through it, but it doesn't mean it continues through it. Like, I mean, I guess it does the way it's set up, but I mean, if the if that MOSFET has different like legs and- I mean, the MOSFET yeah. has to be able to cut, because what happens is the MOSFET is initially open, you plug in the battery, and then the MOSFET closes sometime after you plug in the battery so that you don't get the spark. Right, Blunty, presumably? I guess. I'm, I'm not sure. I, I just don't know. That's my guess. Um, at that point, the MOSFET is never actually switching between open and closed under load. It just stays closed. Uh, although, theoretically, if it's a 300 amp MOSFET, then it's... What's the, what's the part number? I want to see the data sheet. DC05AA... No, you want FDBL zero one five zero. That's the how you can find it. Yeah, N eighty. Yeah, I found it. Okay. Let's look at this data sheet about this MOSFET. Ooh, the we started with Excel spreadsheets and now we're looking at electronics data sheets. So it's funny to me that you would run the all of battery voltage through a MOSFET because like the internal resistance of the MOSFET is also gonna you know it have to be really low internal resistance. How much is this part? Ten volts, eighty amps, one point one milliohms. How much voltage are you losing through the MOSFET? You can't. Why would you run VBAT through a MOSFET? You're gonna immediately lose. Like, well, I mean, isn't it? How much voltage lost through the MOSFET? Drain to source voltage, 80 volts. This is interesting. Who can, people who are better at looking at uh, electronics data sheets than me, I hope you're also digging into this and seeing if you can find interesting things. On resistance, 1.1 to 1.4 milliohms. That's fine. Turn on a source to drain diode voltage. 
So is this the voltage loss through the MOSFET? Are we losing 1.25 volts through this MOSFET all the time? That doesn't seem like that. That wouldn't work. Dervi points out that we run VBAT through MOSFETs all the time. Yeah, no, obviously in the ESC. So there's going to be minimal voltage loss. Is it really rated for 300 amps? Bastian Sonderman points out 110 millivolts at 100 amps. That's reasonable. That's not that much. It's only capable of 400 watts. Aha! Mr. Huggy points out that it is only capable of 400 watts. 429 is the actual number. And then we have just package stuff. So if it's only capable of power dissipation, 429 watts. So if it's only capable of 429 watts, that means it cannot be carrying the full load of a five inch mini quad because they'll exceed a thousand watts easily. You think that's so, like, is that like with no cooling? Cause it says TJ 25 C. So I wonder if that's like, Oh, that's power dissipation. Is yeah, that, like it can only, is it that can only like heat dissipation due to internal resistance? That's not power through the, through the FET. See, unfortunately, I don't know enough about reading this data sheet to sound more intelligent. We need people in the chat who are, it's not the same as the power it could handle. Okay, thank you. That's where I was going. That's only the heat dissipation within. So how many watts does it dissipate? Uh, is that internal resistance times amps power squared? One volt at 300 amps is 300 watts. Okay, so it's no. It's got a huge power dissipation. The question we're trying to answer is, can this MOSFET literally switch battery voltage arbitrarily? That's the question. Here we got the math from one DFGA. 1.1 milliohms went on. I squared R at 100 amps is 11 watts at 100 amps. That's nothing. Okay. Well, that's very interesting. How much is it? How much is this darn thing? That's the short answer. It does look like this can switch battery voltage. That's a boring answer. Oh, hang on. No. No, I just want to buy it. How much is it? Five bucks. That's not bad. So, so, okay. So, Blunty, the question has been, why can't anybody build a switch that can switch battery voltage, blah, 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 so you can turn the power off remotely? And the answer has always been, oh, my God, have you seen how big a 200-amp relay is? And then people say, why not use FETs? And you say, no, it's too, it's too expensive. It's too big. But here we've got a $5 FET that seems to be able to handle the power and switch 300 amps. So has the answer to the question changed? Is it now okay? Well, that part exists. I mean, we don't know, but it looks like it looks like maybe so. Interesting. Thank you for pointing that out. Uh, one DFGA JK JAK three nine two. Uh, I will uh, I will file this away. Uh, you know, like it seems like you could build a circuit board where the FET turns on when you plug in the battery, but you can override that with a signal from the flight controller and power it down. Or a signal from the ESC or from the, from the receiver. Very interesting. Cool.